नमो तस् भगवत अरातो सम्मास हंदनम चपल चित दुराखम दुर्निवार्यम जुम करोति मेधावी सुकारोवते जनम वेलकम टू द धम्मपद प्रोग्राम This is the third chapter called Mind, Chitta Vagga, and this is the first verse of the Chitta Vagga. Handanam chapalam chitta. As a fletcher makes straight his arrow, the wise man makes straight his trembling and unsteady mind. which is difficult to control and difficult to keep away from sense objects bandhanam chapalan chitta our mind is always trembling quivering and unsteady it changes in accordance with various objects which are coming to our eyes and other sense organs it is difficult to tame even for a moment just like a baby who cannot stay in one posture even for a moment our mind runs to numerous objects it is nature of the mind it is the nature of the mind the uncontrolled mind chapalam chittam chapalam uncontrolled chittam mind always is running after sensual pleasures and cannot keep away from sense objects mind is very difficult to guard because it is just like a fish out of water here dunnivaryam means dunnivaryam in pali means that it is difficult to clean and always tending to uncommon objects visabhag aramana uncommon objects we need to clean and fresh our mind but it is a very difficult task for it seeks always unusual and different objects therefore what needs to be done उजुम करोति मेधावी मेधावी पाली इन इंग्लिश को द वाइज वन मेक स्ट्रेट हिज ट्रेम्बलिंग माइंड एस ए फ्लेचर मेक स्ट्रेट हिज एरो सो कीप इन माइंड ओनली द वाइज वन ही while living in a isolated area in a forest practices a set of practices leading to the state of or appropriate to a dhuta as a kind of vow that is to a scrupulous or honorable person he the person who practices dhuta vows he moves his mental defilements by faithful or confident mind he develops samadhi bhavana and vidasana bhavana for promoting calm and introspection 
The wise one straight their mind by the power of developed mind. It is, in the Buddhist context, considered the greatest force, paramount energy and power in the world. Mind can be developed both in secular way and spiritual way. There are two main methods of meditation as taught in the teachings of the Buddha. They are called Samatha meditation and the Vipassana meditation. First, it is Samatha, which is also called the Kamin meditation. Samatha is in Pali language. It means, Samatha means calm, serenity, tranquility. Samatha therefore helps to enter into Vipassana, the inside meditation. Well, there are 40 meditation techniques to practice Samatha meditation. Here it is difficult to explain. It will take a couple of hours if we need to explain them one by one. So the first out of two is the Samatha, a calming, tranquility meditation. And the second is called Vipassana meditation. Vipassana is in Pali language. V means super, special, extraordinary. And Passana means seeing. A developed secular mind is capable of inventing or creating many new material things, such as computer, space shuttle, nuclear weapons, etc. You name it, a secular mind is capable of inventing, creating it. A developed spiritual mind also is capable of understanding the real nature of man universe and all beings and also the Four Noble Truths. It is bent on the welfare of all beings and would generate compassionate, productive and great actions. Bhavana means cultivation. Bhaveti bhavana, cultivate, therefore it is called cultivation of one's mind, bhavana, meditation. A spiritual development of mind, mental development by means of wholesome thoughts, actions and feelings. It is really a great power of mind. Bhavana Bala, a power of mind. It is a joy or pleasure in self-control. Bhavana Rama is to have self-control, a cultured mind through the cultured mind is a great blessing. The cultured man easily pursues the real nature of the world because he has a cultured mind. Man and the beings, he also can see well. The nature of interminable samsaric life, 
you can see the unending cycle of recurrent births and deaths of all beings. So again, it is a cultured mind. Easily perceive the real nature of the world and things. Once someone approached the Buddha and appealed for meditation instructions. At first, Buddha refused it because he knew that it was not the right time for him, but this person kept on insisting on the Buddha. The Buddha finally gave him instructions and he rushed to a nearby forest to practice. But he failed to control his mind and returned without achieving anything. At that time, the Buddha preached him this sermon in order to explain to him who are the people who control one's mind, who controls their mind, who are in a position to control their mind. As a Fletcher makes straight his arrow, the wise man makes straight his trembling and unsteady mind, which is difficult to control and difficult to keep away from sense objects. Again, it is the wise man, not the ordinary man, who is able to control the mind. The message here is very clear. Control your mind. Control your emotions. Anger is an emotion, a bad and harmful emotion. Happiness is also an emotion, a noble and rewarding emotion. Both are two products of one mind just like two sides of one coin. If we control our mind, then it will be easy for us to have good thoughts and happy thoughts, because the controlled mind will produce only good and we will be happy today and tomorrow. If we fail to control our mind, then we will be sad today and definitely tomorrow too. The choice is yours. May you all be well and happy.